اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الصلاۃ والسلام علی سیدنا محمد و علی آلہ و اصحابہ و اہل بیتہ اجمعین all the praise for almighty allah all the praise for the one lord who created everything without any ingredients the one who was before everything and the one who will be after everything the question of the jesus christ coming back from the sky the son of mary and the one who was born without a father and the one who is a servant of the one lord the only worthy of worship one god allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has no family members who has no son or daughter and he is not the son of anyone So the Jesus Christ as we know with the name Isa alayhi salam is the one which is known to come back from the sky it is agreed upon in all schools of thoughts of Islam of all sects of Muslims that Jesus Christ Isa alayhi salam would come back from the sky and he would be the one who would kill the antichrist the false god and the false and the imposter one the antichrist who would claim to be the god and who would present himself with the tricks and he would claim his magical satanic tricks and present them like they were the miracles of Isa alayhi salam prophet Jesus peace be upon him so prophet Jesus he would come back from the sky according to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the final messenger of Allah and the only messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the final generation for the for the final people and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained that Jesus would descend from the sky with his both arms on the shoulders of two angels and those angels would descend from the sky with Jesus alayhi salam and he would be so that his hair would be up to the shoulders and his hair would be so shiny and beautiful that they would look wet and it would look like that the fresh drops of water are dropping are dripping from his hairs but that would actually not be the case he would just be so beautiful his hair would be so shiny that they would they would look like so and jesus alayhi salam would come near damascus damascus a mosque a masjid over there with a white minaret and he would descend over there and he would lead he would be told asked to lead the first prayer for the people but the leader of the muslims that would be imam al mahdi then jesus would ask him to lead the prayer and not lead the first prayer to tell the people to make it sure to make a statement that he has come back as a follower not the leader he has come back as a follower of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has come as the ummati as a follower of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and not as a new messenger
and not as a new prophet. So he would not lead the first prayer and let the leader of the Muslims, Imam al-Mahdi, to lead the first prayer. And after that, since he is more senior, he has been the messenger. So he would then lead the rest of the prayers. He would then be the leader of the Muslims, but he would make a point that he is the follower of Muhammad wasallam and not a messenger, not a prophet, did not come with the new, with the new rules or laws from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the question arises, when Jesus Christ comes back from the sky, would the Christians follow him or not? Would the Christians believe in him or not? Would the Christians realize, Muslims would definitely realize because they would be with Imam al-Mahdi and Imam al-Mahdi would be their leader and Imam al-Mahdi would recognize Jesus Christ. It is agreed upon, there is no other narration, there is no perspective, there is no other perspective. So Muslims would definitely agree and know and follow Jesus Christ and accept him as their leader from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Christians would do the same or not? It has been a question of a lot of debate for, some, for a lot of time now, for ages probably. And some people think that a few Christians would follow and the others would not. But we need to understand the whole logic, the whole scenario. When Jesus Christ descends from the sky, there is no question of Christians following him or not. Because there will be no Christians. Now you'll be thinking, it's quite strange. How come there will be no Christians? there would be no Christians because Imam al-Mahdi according to the narrations of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be Khalifatullahi fil arz Allah's appointed one on the earth and he would be the one under whose rule Islam would enter every household every place small or big, rich or poor. Islam would enter in every household and everyone would be a Muslim. Islam would enter every household and everyone would, would be a Muslim except a few which might not accept Islam. But Islam would definitely enter every household on the face of the earth. So at least one member of the household has to be Muslims under when Imam al-Mahdi rules. And Imam al-Mahdi would rule the whole globe, not some places. And then right after, right at the end of the rule of Imam al-Mahdi, would the Antichrist appear. And the Antichrist would kill billions of people probably. There would be a huge war which would be bigger than the World War III. And that war, in that war, Muslims would already be prepared for the fitna of Antichrist and they would know that it is that Antichrist, the Jal is such a huge fitna that he would be able to claim God, he would be able to deceive people into believing that he is Nauzubillah the God, Nauzubillah Amin So Muslims would have prepared a lot, they would prepare weapons they, and they are the only ruling one, they are the only ruling power over the globe. And they have all of the technology and all of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they would have all of that and they would prepare for the war with the Antichrist because they would know that right the day Imam al-Mahdi takes oath, Imam al-Mahdi would lead the Muslims into seven years of prosperity. And right after the seven years, Antichrist appears. They would know the date. They would know the timeline. 
when Jesus when Jesus would appear and also when Antichrist would come out. And Antichrist, for that they would prepare a lot of weaponry and all those things. And when Antichrist appears, all that technology, all those weapons, missiles, tanks, whatnot would be used against Antichrist and against the Jal. But they would just like the fire, they would be just like the firecrackers. Little toys in front of the power of the Jal, Antichrist. And imagine that weapons of mass destruction, weapons used to kill people, and the power in front of which all those huge weapons look like firecrackers on the other side. Imagine these two powers clashing with each other, with all of their power at their expense, with all of their weaponry, with all of their power, all of their technology, all of their people at their expense, they would clash. Imagine, imagine the destruction it would cause. Billions of, billions of people would die. Not millions, billions. Some would be on the positive side, some would be on the Jal side. The ones with Imam al-Mahdi would be the martyrs. The one with the Jal, with Antichrist, would not be the martyrs. They would be the worst people. So now, after that war, after that war, a few billion people are left. Those people are the ones who are left over from the fitna of the job. But anybody alive and facing the job would not be able to safeguard himself against the job. So anybody alive and facing the job would actually fall for the job. So the only people left would be the ones who are martyred or the ones who would be in Medina with Imam al-Mahdi because the Jal won't be able to enter Medina. The Jal would however make the earth of Medina shake three times and Medina would throw out all of the all of the munafikin, all of the dual people, all of the people who are apparently Muslims, apparently pure but from inside they're not they would be thrown out of the Medina. So the only people in Medina and the people martyred are, are, are safe from the job. So the only people left are the worst people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would then release Gog and Magog and they would kill all of those people who were following the Jal, anti-Christ, right? Now we have only the people with Isa alayhi salam, Jesus in the Medina. Uh, first they would be in the mountains and then, then they would come to Medina. We have all those details in our other lectures. So the only people are the Muslims or the worst people who followed the Jal. So Gog and Magog would kill all of those people who were the Kafirs, infidels, the followers of the Jal, and the only people left are the Muslims in Medina. So now Jesus Christ comes back from the sky to kill the Jal. Right? Right before Gog and Magog. So there are no Christians. Because they would have either followed Islam or followed the Jal. All of the Christians, they would have either become Muslims with Imam al Mahdi or be with Imam al Mahdi in the fight against the Jal. Or they are with the Jal. There are two camps, the ones against the Jal and the ones with the Jal. The ones against the Jal are the Muslims. Even they were Christians, they would have become Muslims. There would be many Christians who would have become Muslims, realizing that Islam is the truth, true religion once Islam comes in power. And the other ones are infidels. There are only two camps. There are no Christians, Jews, there are Hindus, nothing. Only Muslims and non-Muslims. Nothing else. Followers of Imam al-Mahdi and followers of 
Dajjal. So the followers of Dajjal would be killed and finished, the followers of Imam al-Mahdi or Islam would be left. And when Isa salam comes back, there are only Muslims, there are no Christians. So the question of Christians following Isa salam or not is not a valid question at all in the first place. Because when Isa salam comes, again I would repeat, there are only two camps, either Muslim or followers of Imam al-Mahdi or the followers of Dajjal. Followers of Dajjal would be killed and followers of Imam al-Mahdi would follow Isa alayhi salam and accept Isa alayhi salam, Jesus alayhi salam. So they were previously Christians or otherwise it doesn't matter. So I hope it clarifies this long old um, debate of like Christians following Jesus alayhi salam or not when he comes back. That would be the case. I hope it clarifies the whole situation. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the righteous ones, among the ones who are on the right side of the history uh, in such trials and tribulations in the future. Allahumma arinal haqqa haqqa warzuqna tiba'a wa arinal batila batila warzuqna ishtinaba wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammad.